Yeah, so we start the today's webinar. <coughs> Respected senior members of INS and friends, on behalf of the webinar subcommittee, I welcome you all again today for yet another interesting talk on our platform. Uh, today's webinar is 17th in the series, and we are trying to invite all unit heads of DAE besides eminent speakers of excellence. I got a feedback that INS members, not many, but some of them, look forward for Saturday webinar. So uh, this is a, a good development and uh, a recognition of uh, INS activity. So after the talk, uh, we see there is a healthy discussion, suggestions and comments. It's all a welcome uh, activity, welcome development. Our webinar link seemed to be reaching and to entire India and overseas too. This is again a very uh, desirable uh, end result. So INS members located in different part of the settlement to do join us and get the latest information about the newer developments. So this is uh, very heartening. So today we have Dr. D.K. Sinha, Director AMD Hyderabad, who is going to speak on milestones and visions for exploration of atomic minerals in India. Uh, this is an all important topic for DAE and is being a front end of nuclear program. I welcome you, sir. It is our privilege and honor to listen to you. I, I do remember the, your former director of AMD, A.K. Rai. In 2016, he made a presentation on a vision for next 15 years for uranium exploration. He had said that the plan is to increase exploration, mining and milling by 15 folds. Uh, that, is the, that is the production would increase, would see a rise from 450 ton per year to 6,500 ton per year in 2030. So there would be a lot of R&D program for converting green field to brown field for exploration. The projection showed a steep rise from 2008 in form of survey and drilling activities. A lot of improvements have happened in time of flight method of survey. I am personally involved in component testing of Heliborn survey system developed by RC and D. At that time, both IJCAR and BRC were investing a lot of time in mastering this survey technique. So I am sure uh, Sinaji will speak more on all this. So I. Welcome you again, sir, uh, to this uh, webinar. And we wish to hear you, uh, the new developments and activities and achievements, accomplishments by AMD. So before I call you, I wish, uh, I, I uh, would call upon our president, CSK Mehta, to give his opening. Thank you, Mr. Mehta, sir. Yeah. Oh, good evening, everybody. It is a great pleasure to have you all again on this webinar. And I'm especially thankful to Dr. Sina for having agreed to our invitation and delivering a talk today. The Town Mineral Division is a very key factor division right from the very beginning. And I'm sure a lot of scientific inputs have gone into it to make it more efficient and uh, uh, giving it a very uh, important factor thing in uh, our material development and supply. So I'm again thankful to you, Dr. Sina, for making your presentation. And we look forward to your talk. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So before I call upon Dr. D.K. Sinha to give his presentation, I have to read and introduce him. Explosion of atomic minerals. Enunciate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dr. D.K. Sinha joined AMD in 1984 uh, in Western region Nagpur after completing MTech in Applied Ge Geology from Dr. Hari Singh Gaur Vishwavidyalaya Sagar and subsequently obtained PhD in 1993 from Nagpur University. 
He has been associated for more than 37 years in various positions with the exploration of uranium deposits in important geographical, ge geological domains of the country, including Chhattisgarh, Aravali, and Delhi fold beds. He is an excellent academician. This is extraordinary, I believe. He is an excellent academician. As a postgraduate teacher, he has mentored training school officers of BRC Training School, AMD campus. Besides, he has been recognized as an external supervisor for PhD by Nagpur University, Rajasthan University, Jaipur, Usmania, and the Central University of Hyderabad. I, I think this is really astonishing and, and I am envy of him. Presently, Dr. Sinha, as a director AMD, is effectively guiding multidisciplinary exploration program, including the state of art, heliborne operation for exploration of atomic minerals in various geological domains of India. Dr. Sinha has attended the International Convention Trade Show Investors Exchange Meet 2013 at Toronto, Canada. He has attended the International Symposium on Uranium Raw Material for Nuclear Fuel Cycle Exploration, Mining, Production, Supply, Demand, Economics, and Environmental Issues at Vienna, Australia, Austria in 2018. As a member of IAEA Uranium Group, he has attended 56th Uranium Group meeting at IAEA Vienna in 2020 and 57th Virtual Uranium Group meet in 2021 held in Paris, France. He has also carried out several strategic assignments of the Department of Atomic Energy and his contributions have been recognized by the department in 2012 by conferring upon him the Special Contribution Award in 2011, the valuable service to the field of nuclear science and technology and to the program of DAE. As group leader, Dr. Sinha receives the DAE Group Achievement Award in 2019 for the discovery and development of unique polymetallic uranium deposit and at Kudada, Jharkhand. Dr. Sinha also conferred with AEG Sriram Srinivasan Award 2020 of the Association of Exploratory Geophysicists. Dr. Sinha has published three books and more than 120 research articles in various national and international journals and conferences. I think this is an extraordinary bio, bio data of uh, Dr. Sinha. So uh, I welcome you, sir, again, and uh, I now invite you to give your talk. So, this is probably visible. Uh, yeah. The screen is visible. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ramarao, for introducing me. In fact, uh, I am feeling honored uh, speaking in front of uh, INS members and especially the senior members to whom we have seen in DAE in various capacities, to whom we have appeared for our interview qualification and all. Uh, Mehta sir, Malhotra sir, all seniors are visible here. And uh, really, I'm very lucky to be here in this evening with all of you. Uh, you may be aware that uh, Hyderabad INS chapter is very active. And uh, myself, Dr. Dinesh Vasto, and with uh, uh, Sri Chobe sir from ECIL, we are taking the activity of INS into heights from Hyderabad side. And uh, this is again uh, supported by our seniors, those who are here. I would like to take their name, uh, Jairaj sir, Sai Baba sir, and ECIL, XCMD. Uh, they are all helping us to develop INS centers, INS activities in much more efficient way. Coming back to the topic what has been given, in fact, uh, the topic is uh, milestone and vision for explosion of atomic minerals in India. It is, a, in, it is in the same line, which has already been completed by my predecessors, uh, Sri Asnani uh, for UCIL and uh, Dr. Dinesh Vastav for NFC. The work of AMD ultimately is linked with UCIL and then the UCIL work is linked with NFC. So with these three uh, presentations and talk, the front end cycle of the DAE probably gets completed. 
here, uh, if uh, uh, I have to just uh, start the topic, this topic has been chosen considering many ideas. Now we are in the year of 75th years of independence. A great celebration is continuing from last year and it is likely to continue for uh, 15th, till 15th August 22, even up to 23 it will go. And various programs are, are arranged in that light. INS Hyderabad chapter has also continuing a series of uh, Padma Awardees who are every month giving the lecture. Uh, probably this uh, month uh, we may hear the lecture from our PSA who has consented us uh, uh, for INS lecture series from Hyderabad chapter. Uh, I was talking for 75th years of independence. AMD is also related to that. We are also touching to 73 years of exploration history under AEC. I'll be just uh, sharing the thought of AMD related uh, inclusion in AEC as well as its uh, birth from where we have come and how, how it has come to DAE. All those things will be there in my uh, talk so that the, the people, those who are associated with us, they are aware of the history of AMD and this history is very bright history. We have been, we have been taken uh, from almost zero level. Now we have reached to Atmanirvata space. And all those milestones are there, which I'll be talking to my talk. And all these things have been supported by a very good culture of the AMD. This culture basically uh, is like a military culture type of thing. British culture, what we are following, and here the discipline is on top. And uh, I am uh, uh, sharing this thought that the milestones, whatever we have achieved, is, is carefully thought by our seniors, by our ex-directors, seniors, those who have given the footpath to follow. And accordingly, the vision is available for us. Now, at this moment, we have something new to visualize the next 25 years, that is the 2047 period, when India will be completing the 100th years of its independence. And we should show that, yes, AMD and DAE has reached to this vision, which was envisaged during this time say 50, uh, say by now or some 25 years back. So accordingly, the whole thing will be uh, presented in this talk of say one hour, one and a half uh, uh, hour. I, I have given the opening slide with a lot of uh, glimpses of uh, atomic minerals uh, direct trades work. Many things are there and all those interesting items you will see in my talk at various stages. So this is a entirely a different gamut of activity which you are going to see and experience the way we are working and the way we are contributing to the Atmanirvarta and the programs of NDA. Again, uh, considering the participants from various uh, groups uh, subjects, Something, some general type of information has also been included in this talk so that it should not be focused directly upon the earth science or geology related uh, domain of the AMD, but uh, chemical related information, physics related information, what we are using. In fact, the work of AMD is a work related to physics, chemistry, mathematics, and other sciences which we utilize for identification of minerals, estimation of minerals. So I'll take uh, uh, the first, uh, next slide, next slide please. I, I, I'll take you to this uh, periodic table where we are landing and what are these atomic minerals? Everybody talk about atomic minerals, but what is the meaning of atomic minerals? That one should first uh, understand. Many, many seniors must be under, uh, knowing it, but I thought that I should start from very basic those who are not understanding are the students are the young officer who are listening this talk may be benefited. So coming to this periodic table, one can see the brown color uh, place is indicated for the elements which are important for nuclear industry. Say for example, lithium, beryllium, yttrium, zirconium, niobium, lanthanum, and then lanthanides, 
and then actinides, see, all those things, and rare earth, thorium, and uranium. And then there are two elements which are helpful for AMD point of view, that is radon, and another is your helium. So these are the elements uh, which we uh, look for for the exploration point of view. All those things I'm going to touch upon during my uh, this uh, one of uh, our, uh, our presentation. So coming back to atomic minerals, atomic minerals are specified in part B of the first schedule to the MMDR Act. What is this MMDR Act 1957? This is a very important act, Mines, Minerals and Mines Development Regulation, Regulatory Act. So this is the uh, uh, a rule, a MMDR rule, and that has been enacted on during 1957, and it is continuing from that time. In that schedule, these minerals, atomic minerals, have been classified. And what are those atomic minerals? Uranium, thorium, uh, related, niobium, tantalum, all these things are classified. Further, they have also been included in the Atomic Energy Act of 1962 as a prescribed substances. So these are the minerals which general public cannot uh, handle them they are uh, they are controlled by certain rules and that rules is again uh, made by dae for the dae so being part of dae amd is the authority who is regulating these minerals and the exploration related exploitation related and handling related issues of these minerals and most uh, these minerals are mostly, or the compound are mostly uranium, thorium, rare metals. They are niobium, tantalum, lithium, beryllium, zirconium, and RE, which are required for our nuclear power program. And this is the main, main job what AMD does for the nuclear power program of the India. Next. So the elements I have talked about, and we know that ultimately elements, when they combine, they form the minerals. That's why this glimpse of minerals has also been brought here to just make you feel that what are the atomic minerals? These are the atomic minerals. They are very colorful minerals. Uranite is one, pitch blend is another. Uranite is crystallizes in a symmetric system. Then we have a branerite mineral. The formula is given and it crystallizes in monoclinic system. Then autonite is also one mineral. That is a secondary mineral, orthorhombic system. Carnotite, again, monoclinic system. Columbite, it's a mineral of niobium. Then we have tantalite, this is a mineral of tantalum. Then we have lithium also, spodumene is a mineral. Lepidolite, mineral of lithium. Then beryllium, beryl mineral. Then bastanesite, again, RE mineral. Monazite is also there, which is a rare earth phosphate and mineral of LRE. And then we have genotime, that is a mineral of HRE. So one can see the colorful gamut of activities of uh, minerals which are related to atomic mineral. Though uranium, uranite is a black color, but when it gets oxidized or it goes to secondary environment, it gives color of plenty color of minerals. And we know thousands and thousands of secondary uranium minerals which are having a gamut of colors by which they are identified. In fact, in historical days, this was the main source of identification of uranium mineral. If you are getting colorful color painting somewhere, then you can suspect uranium is there or copper is there. So that was the idea of having uh, mineral uh, in this slide to make you feel that these are the minerals which AMD is dealing and we are the people who are searching for these minerals for the nuclear program of the country. Next one. Now, related to these minerals, exploration has to be done. And as we know that exploration is a very important activity of an uh, important activity of mankind. It could be of any mineral, any metal. Ultimately, metals are required. That's why we know iron is, we know copper is, bronze is, all those things are there. And probably we don't know, may, may, may come, uranium age also may come sometime when we need uh, nuclear energy through our uranium resources. So that type of thing is there. And ultimately, the exploration related issues has got a different set of philosophy. I'm going to talk about uh, that philosophy. But what is this? This is a very high risk effort of exploration. Basically, in our literature, when we read, 
it is clearly written that exploration is a nothing but gambling you should gamble it but with your sincere effort with your wisdom you are going to win otherwise most of the time you are going to fail so based on that wisdom this is become a multidisciplinary field where everything is involved physics involved chemistry is involved engineering is involved everything is involved then only you can get the knowledge of mineral occurrence or the quantity of mineral which is present ultimately when you know about the mineral uh, presence it has to be known that what is the dimension of that body it mostly it occurs subsurface and as we know mother earth is so strong that hardly we get any information though we are trying it through indirect sources and that indirect sources ultimately lead us to interpret that this is probable the dimension of the occurrence or the deposit and if it is known that okay this is the dimension then you should get what is the amount of material available what is the grade of that material grade means what is the uh, quality type of thing is there in that particular body so these two things tonnes tons availability quantity and its quality and its dimension these are the three important things which are very very essential for assessment of any deposit and that what we do in amd in broad perspective i'm talking and all those things are required naturally many many studies are required many scientific studies are required for that we have to do the mineralogical studies and for mineralogical studies we need lot of support from instrumentation xrf xrd icpos so many instruments are now required for understanding of these three these two aspects which i just uh, said about this so we are utilizing mineralogical mineral chemical and geochemical characterization utilizing our instruments and before that sampling is very essential and for there then if we get that some data then mineral pr reactions and all those things physical chemical conditions of formation and all these ultimately help us to know how this anomaly or how this occurrence or how this deposit has been generated this must have been generated by the earth processes as we know that earth is very old some 4 4 giga enum old earth has been fractionated to this level today we are living in the present time but many many aspects are there in the earth history which has ultimately given the deposits and those deposits have got their genetic imprints the job of a geologist is to understand that genetic imprints find out its uh, quality find out its quantity and then try to uh, try to pro uh, provide the data for its uh, exploitation again exploitation is possible but it has to be tagged with economics if it is economical then fine otherwise it is going to be a waste many times we explore we prove but we are not able to take out because of economics right now it is not economical may not to be uh, economical in future but may be economical in the near future or far future so all those things are the vision of any exploration program next one so coming back to as i said it's a gamble type of uh, activity where many 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 factors are involved if uh, i have to plot them in a form of uh, graphical representation then the bottom one has been given in a form of activity very very uh, some uh, activities are required to do this of course literature survey of course uh, reconnaissance survey of course detail survey all those things are some activities and what this ultimately lead to so executions are conceptual planning conceptual planning then detail planning then comes uh, reconnaissance then comes target appraisal then comes exploratory drilling then comes assessment drilling and then comes mine development and then finally mine and again all these things require money or the expenditure as i said economics is very very important in this issue so the black solid black line can be seen which is increasing right towards right hand side and it touches at the at the uh, right hand side where mining activity is shown so when the mining activity starts the maximum mining expenditure 
uh, when mining start, the expenditure is the highest. And if you take in the terms of where the risks are involved, naturally the left side high risk is there. You have to take decision whether you should continue or you should start. So first thing is the regional selection. Broadly, you have to select the broad area. Yeah, yeah, please. Hello, yeah. it's okay. Should I continue? Our issues are there. Password is that. You please continue. I think I'll mute Mama, him. Mama, password Google it. Me da firsa. No, no, the bar is there. But anyway, hello. Okay. Can oh, you yes. mute yourself, please? Okay. Sign in. Le put ke idle password ke kar. Okay, sir. I'm cutting. Capital is small. Hello. Can you mute yourself, please? Uh, yes, sir. I am continuing. So, left side is your high risk environment where one has to take decision based on various factors written here that conceptual planning, detail planning, and all those things. Then, when you you are uh, selected the area based on your regional area, when you have selected the area, then you are going to your the pre-feasibility study and then find out yes now the investment can be made and we can go ahead with uh, the mine production and the bottom line if one can see various uh, phases i have given these are the phases where the years are given of course this uh, figure is based on m 1988 but it has been modified as per indian conditions what we are doing we are planning and we are spending this much time. If a discovery is made, this much times are spent on that. 15 to 20 years goes for reaching to feasibility stage. So point is here that it requires a lot of time. It is a time consuming job. It cannot be made in five years. It cannot be made in one year. If somebody asks that in uh, next year, can you give me a deposit? No, it is not at all possible. It has to be seen with the various processes with various sampling methodology and then assessment or analytical procedures to be adopted for getting the real data, near to truth data, then only we can say the deposit is ready. So 20 year is the lifespan of this investigation. And then finally, when the deposit established, then that takes 30 years continuity where the mine will be there and the production will be there. And it can go, depending upon the quantity, it may go 30 years or 50 years. So this is the total history of a mineral occurrence going to deposit, exploitation, profit making, and serving the society. So next, please. Next. Next. Okay. Huh. So that was a general concept which I was talking. It is true. It was true for everything, not for uh, atomic minerals, but it is true for copper minerals or I mean, lurging mineral or aluminum mineral. So coming back to our own interest, our interest is in the atomic minerals. That that point uh, I would like to emphasize before I go to this atomic mineral exploration site. I would like to read a para which gives glimpses of AMD and it's a historical perspective. And at this moment, I would like to inform that a lot of background is there for AMD and we should know the background. I'm reading this para from my abstract. This abstract was submitted to uh, Dr. Ramarao. The first para of this is the pursuit of survey for the mineral required to sustain the atomic energy program of independent India was first emphasized by the visionary scientist Dr. Homi Jawahangir Bhava, who laid the foundation of the nuclear power program of the country. The government, the government of India accepted <clears throat> his proposal and the Atomic Energy Commission of India was constituted on 10th August 1948. In the pre-independence era, during the second world, in the pre-independence era, during the second world war, 1939 to 45, Geological Survey of India had created the Rare Minerals Survey Unit, RMSU, with the sole purpose to procure beryl from the mica mines of the country. Dr. Bhava's efforts fructified in transferring the RMSU, which was then functioning under Geological Survey of India, to Ministry of Natural Resources and Scientific Research in 48, 1948, 
and consequently the rmsu was brought under the control of aec with effect from july 49 with a focused mandate of exploring a strategic minerals and metallic elements of interest to atomic energy program of the country such as uranium thorium beryllium graphite etc in 1953 rmsu was renamed as raw material division and later atomic mineral division in 1958 so this is the history of amd of creation and uh, we are continuing our 73 and 74th years of uh, service after inclusion in the uh, a a atomic energy commission now this uh, picture gives the role of atomic energy now where why we are contributing we are directly contributing for uranium we are directly contributing for rare metal and rare earth and for uh, re point of view and thorium point of view vision pleasure so broadly three divisions are there in addition to the in addition to these we have added the lithium and helium wing of uh, exploration in amd also uh, considering the requirement of uh, future that is the vision of uh, uh, amd so basically these are the responsibility for example survey prospecting and augmentation of these elements and for that we do exploratory mining and then when the mine is ready the exploratory part is ready then that is handed over to ucl for taking up and as usual you know that number of mines being operated by ucl ucl has initiated another new mine in rajasthan that is near rohil and third the another new mine is coming in the uh, singhum area uh, shortly and in addition to that we are we have been given authority for mine plan approval for the atomic minerals you may be knowing that all along the coast a lot of atomic minerals are available from odisha to uh, maharashtra if you see many many atomic minerals related deposits are there so the regulation related to that is the responsibility of amd under the dae in addition to that geotechnical investigations required for nuclear power plant setting are being taken up by us and most of the rather all the nuclear power plant has been investigated by amd when they were conceived that the power plant has to be made so we have provided the geotechnical investigations we have done survey and based on that data all those things have been approved so these are these are the major activities where we are uh, participating again if we see why it is so important uranium is vital for energy security then rare metal and rare earth they are source material for modern technology and required for make in india that's why we have been uh, we have been uh, exploring this and the more efforts and uh, emphasis is enhanced for taking up the rare rare earth related exploration is there and the demand is also there so our uh, efforts have are again diverted to that then comes uh, beach sand where we have a good thorium and as well as good uh, titanium resources so all along this coast as i said placers are there <clears throat> where we are exploring the thorium re and titanium minerals next one this is a pictorial activities of uh, amd where one can see the activity what we do and these are the activities which are required for ultimately landing to a deposit which is exploitable by ucl the left top picture basically shows the helicopter survey helipon survey i'll be explaining in uh, little detail in the next slide but that type of uh, a uh, survey is conducted uh, where we take a helicopter and a, a bird is uh, flown along with that helicopter that uh, that measures the earth property in a form of magnetism in a form of electromagnetism in a form of gravity and all those things and that has been interpreted in a form of various pictures that is shown in the next right to that and all those pictures when we get we we try to understand those pictures and then we directly land to the locations and the top right picture is that location where we go with our scintillometer counter and we try to get the information whether the helicopter survey or whether the fixed wing survey has given proper data or not radiometric data or magnetic data or electromagnetic data and we find that yes the data is matching then comes the other investigations other investigations are shown in the middle line where various uh, instruments are taken to the field geophysical instrument geochemical instrument and then finally we collect the samples and we study them in a 
in a laboratories in a form of petrological microscope or in a form of geochemical web which is shown in the uh, left side of the bottom photograph and then finally when we establish that something is there it is fruitful for going for further exploration then we go for drilling and drilling machines are shown all these things i am going to discuss in next slides in detail next one as i said uh, uh, this uh, helibon survey it is a very very important and basically this is a milestone of amd amd is the pioneer in india who has started this type of airborne survey where fixed wing uh, fixed wing uh, aircraft were used taking the instrument into air and those instruments were mostly aerodynamic uh, related uh, instruments magnetic related uh, instruments geographical positioning related instruments and now we are taking the instrument through helicopter electromagnetic surveys and these this is the operation which is shown in the left side where a a loop is uh, flown parallel to earth and that sends the electromagnetic pulses and which gives us uh, the signals so why this survey is important naturally uh, we know that airborne survey is fast and economical and it gives a large coverage in a minimum time access is uh, given to inaccessible areas even in meghalaya area we have done this survey where the access to jungle area is very difficult because of dense forest and high uh, rough terrains then this this data is high resolution data and spatial accuracy is found on that and then simultaneous measurement of multiple parameters can be done data acquisition in desired grid pattern is possible very close very large all those things are possible and then scale of the survey can be fixed so all these all these advantages are there and then the methodology or the sensors what we are taking up they are following sensors for example this is a tm uh, which measures the secondary magnetic field corresponding to the induced currents developed in the buried conducting bodies in response to the primary mag magnetic ma primary magnetic field created by the coil of the survey system so this is the methodology through which we test the conductance of the body in case if it is lying say up to 1 km depth then that is tested magnetic property is also tested similarly measure the mag total magnetic field and here the instruments we use cesium vapor magnetometer and which is operational in the range of 15000 to 1 lakh 5000 nanotesla then we are taking up the gamma ray spectrometer which measures the radiations uranium thorium potassium from 30 cm above the ground and all those things are taken up gravity survey also we are doing single vertical sensor and where we are measuring the gravity so these are the operations which we do through airborne survey and this gives us some target or some information which is hidden below the surface and that is now our target everything uh, is there but it has to give its signal and we are trying to get that signal and then finally when we get that signal that signal is again utilized by foot survey next one this is the foot survey the pictures of foot survey where all areas uh, they mostly they are in very tough terrain and going to that area staying that all those jobs are being done by amd and we take up that job we collect the data we bring those uh, reality whatever whatever has been found from the airborne related monitoring airborne related uh, uh, survey operations and then when we see that yes the uh, this is matching the ground survey data is matching and then down survey data and the sample direct sample is collected rocks and all those things they are brought to the they are brought to the laboratory and then we measure the radioactivity or the property whatever properties has been uh, found from the subsurface uh, uh, collection subsurface exploration through airborne then then we, then it goes for the next uh, aspects so foot survey or ground survey is very very important for for corroborating or for uh, confirming the data what has been collected through airborne survey units when this is when this is uh, proved that yes something is there some anomalous item or some mineral is there in fact this is true for all minerals not for uranium uh, this is a general philosophy of all the minerals similarly we do for gold similarly we do for lead zinc similarly we do for copper and all minerals so when you find that yes now the metals are there some metals and metal has to be conductive so conductive property of the metal is utilized 
for knowing them through electromagnetic survey and of course if they are magnetic naturally the magnetic contrast has to be there if they are heavy for example if uranium is there naturally the gravity can help you for understanding of the contrast so various contrast through various methodology and then surface sampling surface <laughs> identification physical physical checking all those things ultimately land to a model and that genetic model that model help us to prove physically further downward so the next step next slide the next step is to again prove them with the help of geophysic instrument geophysic instrument which we have carried through air one we have ground instruments as well so those ground instruments are again sent to those ground instruments are again deployed to the ground to again confirm geologically as well as geophysically geochemically all those points if they are converging when we are through that now the aspects what we have seen through airborne survey through ground through ground data confirmed by the ground instruments then we land to that conclusion that okay now now this needs further testing and when we decide that okay it has to be tested then planning has to be made a a good job is being done good modeling is being done nowadays softwares are there earlier days we didn't have any software everything was based on pen and pencil drawing on drawing sheet making uh, trying and then visualizing our own imagination how the subsurface will be there making profile making section then understanding then deciding how much deep it should go 200 meter 500 meter what should be the angle of uh, probing all those things are done by the exploratory drilling next slide the drilling one can see uh, this is the drilling what uh, drilling we have taken the left side picture very old picture 1955 exploratory drilling in singhum jadugada area this was the machine what was used, utilized in 55 and from that day we are continuing our machines are continuing as you can see that drilling is continuing in the right hand side of the picture and this way we go to that particular target which is again very difficult very difficult to probe the dimension of probing is hardly 42 or 50 mm and with that bore hole we go up to 1 km or 1.2 km deep into the earth and we take out the samples at various intervals say 100 meter 200 meter 300 meter and then whole body is punctured when whole body is punctured naturally you get the sample you analyze those samples through various methodologies so here what we are communicating that number of number of uh, drilling rigs are employed for doing this job and uh, i am happy to share that a in india amd is the leading drilling or the leading organization who is employing this much units for their exploration program approximately 2 lakh meter drilling per year we are doing through our own means and through contractual mode so this is a huge figure 2 lakh meter drill core handling taking out analyze understanding them making them in a form of model making them in a form of knowledge all those things are being done by amd scientists for understanding the subsurface and this help us in identification of not only uranium other metals as well many times we found copper many times we find molybdenum many times we find uh, gold also so this is the exploration which continues the bottom two pictures are the latest technology which has been introduced into amd in 2006 and 7 and these are the hydrostatic rigs and they are very fast rigs these rigs are helpful in uh, doing the drilling of 30 meter a day and how the material comes out that has also been shown in the right hand side bottom corner where one can see the core now the left side picture is a graphical representation here i would like to bring the attention of uh, viewers that one can see the steepening of graph a graph is steepened in the right hand side say it is more steeper in the two, after 2000 after 2000 period where we can see that the graph is going uh graph is going up and up okay so uh, the left side we can see it is uh, early years where the drilling was continuing 
the blue color is a contractual drilling and the red color is departmental drilling it was at the bottom very low less than 5000 or 10000 meter per year and then again one can see the middle portion where some bulge is there bulge that is the time when we have started introducing our contract drilling and all and then the third one the third where is steep rise so the steep rise has come when we have started inducting the this uh, hydrostatic dig as well as the contractual rigs and this has given us impetus to our exploration program and this is directly related to proving of the quantity of uranium so here the milestone we started our drilling in 55 this is one milestone then again we started it uh, in the uh, 70s 80s again the bulging is there the uh, the quantum has increased and from 2006 onward the steep rise so that is again milestone my topic says the milestone so my, drilling is another milestone of amd which is now on top of our priority and this is giving direct data for proving of the resources next one now coming to back to some philosophy of uranium exploration basically it is a scientific way of understanding and then putting into uh, picture putting into place next one how how uranium has evolved through geological period we know that four giga enum is the age of the earth that time uranium was not there because uranium is a large iron lithophile element and it doesn't concentrate in the early crust we know that early crust was not the crust what we see now early now the crust is enriched in the large iron lithophile that is your potassium related minerals potassium related minerals potassium related elements but the earlier crust was made up by the mg and fe mg and fe and in mg and fe uranium doesn't fit get it fit into so it was not at all possible to get concentrated in early crust slowly slowly it started fractionating and it started moving around and we know that it was it was the time when it has started from fractionation and fractionation ultimately gives the uh, gives the deposition if we can see the left uh, right, the graph given here the as wise as wise time is given bottom is 3.1 3 2.7 2.3 to 1.9 they are all giga enum and when we see the 3.1 to 2.3 giga enum period the earth was getting cooler cooler and uranium was distributed but not getting getting concentrated to some place which is necessary for making it a deposit as and we know that 2.3 giga enum is the time when oxygenation took place and oxygenated environment create was created in the earth because of many regions many regions are the plant and all those things started flourishing that time and so the oxygenation came into picture and when oxygenation came into picture so whatever u4 was there that got oxidized and went into u6 and that has created another environment where the mobility started and when the mobility started it went into c because oxygen was there c water was there so everything flowed and then it went to the c of that time 2 giga enum and when the c was available naturally it will have a different type of environment where where the uranium could get fixed it was in the solution then wherever it could get it could get the reducing environment it got fixed into u4 stage and the deposit was created this is the general history what i have just explained and one can see the various times are there therefore and in our terminology we say that times are fixed uranium fixation time is fixed from 2 to say 0.4 giga enum it is written here so that is the main period where in reducing environment u6 got reduced to u4 and is giving us the deposit basically all these ideas are there when we decide that particular area has to be taken this requires understanding based on the knowledge based on the geological environment based on the feedback available with uh, the helibon survey based on the data available from other literature or other workers who whosoever has been uh, involved in those areas and contributed for understanding so ultimately we decide that this is the place where one should look for probability of getting any uranium or any other mineral 
related uh, deposits. Next one. This is basically uh, various, uh, uh, what I have said earlier, this is the time. Time again divided into 2,800 uh, to 2.2 giga enum. Again, that period was there. Then 2,000 to 800 mega, mega uh, enum period is there where various processes took place. We know that uh, uh, on our surface, we see many, many, many plain areas, many hilly areas. Basically, all those plain areas and hilly areas are represented the various geological, various geological episodes in the Earth history. You can see the Indian uh, geological map, the green color, whatever is shown there prominently is nothing but a Dakan basalt. And Dakan basalt, what we see in the Mumbai, it goes up to Nasik, goes up to south in the Gulbarga, and goes up to Madhya Pradesh, and then up to north. All those places, that is the flood basalt terrain. And here the plateau is there. And, but it is again surrounded by the sub, sub uh, it is surrounded by a different, different types of hills. Every hill has got its own characteristic. If you see the Vindhyan rocks, they are horizontal. If you go to Aravali, Udaipur and all, they are not horizontal. They are, they are uh, different uh, types of uh, the peaks are there. Similarly, if you go to south, the hills are different. They are very old hills. Dharwar, if you go, or Palghat, you go, they are our different type of things. If you go to Eastern Ghat, they are again different types of rocks. So all these different top types of environments are available, which have been generated during the earth history from 4 giga enum to present time. And especially the rocks which have been generated from 2, 2 giga enum to 0.8 giga enum are the important for our exploration point of view. Various places we have seen, wherever we get the flat terrain, we say that this is the sedimentary basin. And sedimentary basin means there was a sea some time back, maybe 1500 mega enum earlier, the sea was existing. And that sea has given some environment where some different type of uh, stromatolites or some different type of plants flourished and they have fixed the uranium. This is the history of Tumalapalli yeah. I am talking. Or in the case of in the case of Singhbhum, if you go, the rocks were deformed at about 2000 mega enum and they have provided the loci for the solutions to get trapped and form the deposits. So this is a very complex subject. I am not going to discuss all those complexity of the subject, giving overall picture that this is the environment of geological environment, which pro has provided the means for setting up the mineralization and the knowledge of that mineralization, the knowledge or genetic aspect of the mineralization ultimately help us to land to that particular area or to particular deposit for proving point of view. Next one. This picture ultimately gives us the uh, milestone of AMD. The right side picture is very clearly shows that in 1951, first report of the uranium mineralization in Jadugula was seen. 1951, I am talking. I am talking to milestone now. Then 1956, discovery of first uranium mineralization in Rajasthan was there in Umrah area. Then in 57, exploratory mining in Ura for uranium in Umrah and Jadugula, Jadugula block started in 1973. Vein type uranium um, uh, exploration uh, started and we have proved in Bodal, Chhattisgarh, Chhattisgarh state. And then in 1984, sandstone type of uranium deposit was discovered in the Meghalaya. These are the milestones where various deposits or various environment were investigated and we could get the deposits in that particular era. In 1960, 1986, the Stratobond stone type deposit in Tumlapalli was discovered. In 1991, unconformity type of deposit in Lamapur, Telangana was discovered. In 1994, Wakin uranium deposit was discovered. And in 1997, high-grade wind type deposit in Gogi was discovered. And this ultimately has given the Philip for establishing a huge deposit. One can see that post-2006 or 7, and this post-2006 and 7 again coincides with our Enhanced drilling capacity, which I have just explained that when we involved the hydrostatic uh, rigs for our exploration, and this has given the landmark uh, 
proving of our resources that is 1 lakh ton of uranium resources was proved during that time and slowly slowly the resources started enhancing it was it was proved in 2014 about 2 lakh ton and in 2019 it was 3 lakh ton and right now in 2021 we are at 3 lakh 51000 of resources one can see that prior to 2007 it was hardly 1 lakh ton and ultimately the the basis or the the foundation which was given has proved fruitful and we are going in this speed that we are likely to touch just to double uh, resources in a 3 or 4 years uh, in a sorry in a 10 and 15 years of uh, period which was which is going to be a remarkable vision for amd based on the strong footing what we have uh, what we have achieved and again on the left side graph clearly brings out the resource addition clearly it, it gives you the resource the kink wherever you are seeing the kink the kink is always correlated with the discovery of particular mineralization in particular environment the left kink the left most kink is because of sandstone type then second kink is again carbonate type and third kink is unconvertible related and then granite hosted and then finally tumla palli type of deposit has given us this steep rise where we are drilling and we are proving it is a huge deposit it it has already crossed 2 lakh tons 50% of deposit is from tumla palli so overall resource position if we see we are very comfortable we are having a good resources now res proving resources doesn't mean that everything is available it has to be exploited exploitation has got so many if and whats and that has to be taken care and if that is there and proper technology is available for the recovery of resources then this whole thing becomes very economical or highly economical but again we know that these minerals are strategic minerals for them a different strategy plays whether the economic will pay or not it has to be decided by the requirement so we are continuing our job our job is to prove the resource keep the resource ready and technology or the economics will play subsequently for utilization or exploitation or not to exploitation next one now coming to what is our vision these are the milestone which i discussed now coming to vision what vision we have we should have vision and we have our vision we right now what we are seeing that various places are there as as i have already told that uh, helibon survey is the main main exploration tool of the amd and we are doing at least 50000 line kilometer per year and that is providing us new new targets very targets are there and i am happy to share that now earlier earlier time it was very difficult that we were not understanding the data now we are understanding the data we are interpreting the data and the tool uh, has uh, given us new targets and new successes as well earlier targets were there but when we were drilling we were not getting the desired goal but nowadays from last 2 to 3 years the goals are the uh, the results are coming positively with the help of the geophysical data when we are planning our drilling targets and we are landing to the right place we are proving the new environment of depositions new environment of mineralizations it is in addition to what was there of course mineralization the country is limited so oh, everything is geologically everything is known but when we test the concept you may learn to same concept you may learn to some other informations now the emerging concepts which are emerging with the help of heavy drilling of 2 lakh meter per uh, year with the help of 50000 line kilometer by helibon survey all those things ultimately is giving a new conceptual models some of them i have listed of course they are old but the concepts these things have been explored but the new concepts have emerged based on latest information it is nothing but it is new but but at the same time when you get the data when you get the analysis your knowledge enhances and the concepts and again uh, i i will share this information that this field this exploration field is a scientific field everywhere world over the people are exploring people are studying and they are documenting their findings and those findings are making us more wiser 
we are reading them we are consulting them and we are applying them in our environment similar environment has been given good deposit there then naturally similar environment is here so these are the places where we are looking for our vision which ultimately is going to touch a greater height as i said in the coming 25 years all these places are uh, being explored and probably we may have at least one deposit in in, in these places new concept whatever has been generated are really new for us which we have not thought of but with the help of new information we are exploring them and we are going to prove uh, a good deposit from these places for example if i say mahadeg basin yes it is there but some of the areas are unexplored for example the around umtumkot area or in between uh, in between wakin and umtumkot a large patch is available that is going to be there then we have started exploring migmatite hosted deposits in the cgg area is a large belt it has been flown by helimon survey from sonabhadra district to gaya district of uh, uh, jharkhand where we are finding and probably we may land to some good deposit in a near future similarly we have explored a very good environment in the uh, tumlapalli area in the turamdi area where we have seen a different type of uranium deposit which has got association of plenty of metals including mg up to 25% including re up to 2% including chromium up to 1000 ppm including copper including vanadium all those things are there in the deposit this deposit we are going to write to state government for uh, for taking up further uh, exploitation point of view again that uh, channel is there so this deposit is ready for handing over to ucr already we have talked and we are going to Uh, say that this is the a new type of environment which has been such this is a only two years discovery what i am sharing with you now coming to nadan part of the kappa of course uh, we have not uh, found a, we we have located some deposit further exploration is continuing and that has again given us another environment further deeper series earlier it was a silver one but when we got the data from helimon uh, survey we could know that deeper deeper level is also having some different environment which is a new find so all those new finds are ultimately going to lead to a new set of deposits which we are very prom which are we are very uh, positive for that of course kadappa in tumla palli is continuing further east of kadappa whatever has been proved in uh, last uh, say 15 years is there but some new information has generated that new information is now a driving force for our exploration program in new environment new type of deposit may come in the eastern part of tumla palli that and then again you you are aware for gogi deposit further east of gogi we have something good now coming up and that is going to be a much more uh, richer deposit in the same environment sandstone type of deposits we are searching in gonwana area it is a in baitul district early early uh, exploration has given uh, good result but still we are struggling we are trying to understand the processes in fact exploration requires understanding of processes if you can understand process your deposit delineation or establishment will be easier so we are trying with the help of new informations new drilling input and all those things are the visions of amd which are going to double the uranium resources right now we are 3.5 we may touch 7 as per our uh, targets say in a 10 years period so that is the vision what amd has for at least for uranium resources coming to next now now another aspects where where we are involved that is a rare metal and rare earth exploration this is also very very important uh, metal domain and nowadays as we know that everywhere re is being dug and re is required we are also given this task to explore the re provide the re uh, good re deposit to the country for exploitation point of view and we know that steep rise in the global demand for rm and re due to their growing application in nuclear sciences space research defense medical sciences high tech industries and clean energy generations all these things are required and ultimately they are going to be a part of make in india industrial program next one now coming to rare metal related 
this uh, this is a philosophy of exploration what i am going to share you uh, i said uh, earth was uh, uh, formed at 4 giga ena means slowly slowly started cooling when it started cooling it it gave various deposits say up to 3 giga ena it was cooled and various uh, granitic rocks were formed and then subsequent cooling and formation of granitic rocks gives this type of deposits large iron lithophile nature of uranium large iron lithophile nature of niobium tantalum ultimately make them to crystallize in some group of rocks they we say them as a granite rock and granite and pegmatite are the rocks where they get crystallized and along with them these are the minerals lithium beryllium cesium niobium tantalum tin tungsten tin yttrium and other rare earth get also crystallized so this is the shape of body what we get uh, uh, from uh, granite ultimately which gives us the concentration of these elements and they are very very important element they are high temperature elements and they are formed at the end phase of your granitic magma when it crystallizes to uh, reaches to pegmatitic stage next one now this type of body is there then it has to be exploited naturally manually we collect the samples we take out the samples and the the uh, property of nbta is heavy so considering its high gravity we take out those material we classify them and then then the material is uh, processed through various uh, mechanization and that mechanization ultimately gives the concentration idea is to take directly from those ores to concentrated form so you can see that niobium tantalum segregations are found beryl segregations is found spodumene segregations are found lepidolite segregations are found and we use the process of wet trommeling wet tabling all those things are used in the field itself and we get out we take out the material which is useful for our industrial purpose next one so that way we prove the niobium and tantalum now coming to rare earth rare earth has got a very special speciality nowadays it is a material of geopolitics now we know that china has got main resources and the graph shown here shows the red color is uh, the, the horizontal axis is the year and the vertical axis is your production data so one can see the red color mark is a field of china china has got a deposit of bastenesite where they have started where they have started production and they have dominated in the in the uh, rare earth market earlier if you see from 1950 to 1960 or 1970 mostly monazite placer deposits were there and india is a enriched uh, uh, country where the monazite related placers are available so we are having a very very comfortable position but slowly slowly again one more deposit in america was dis uh, discovered that was that is mountain pass mine so america also blue color is american uh, field so with, with the contribution of that blue color america also came into picture but when the china started exploitation of bastenesite related mineralization for re they started producing more and when they started producing more the prices also they reduced and when the prices gone down the most of the mines outside china got closed and they became the master of the market and that has created the real real problem for re market and subsequently when when they started controlling the re market or re productions the other other countries started looking to that this is a very important uh, resource and it has to be available for everybody then we, we the process the 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 pressure of exploitation exploration and exploitation came to many countries including india and we also started exploring re from last 3 to 4 years we started exploration of re and finally we have also reached to certain stage that yes we can say that we are also having a good deposit which is likely to be exploited by the agencies next one one can see how the concentration of uh, uh, re varies it is a very low concentration material total if we see hardly hardly in ppm ranges it is 30 ppm 39 ppm like that and this is the range and any deposit where we have to get such type of concentration may not helpful but it it crystallizes in other 
minerals in a form of minerals they are monazite and zircon uh, and genotime where we can get lre enrichment or or hre enrichment so the estimated average concentration of the re in the earth crust is hardly 100 to 240 ppm uh, <clears throat> and this has got this has got a, a very very uh, low level of concentration now if it is to be it is it is to be uh, exploited it should go to at least 0.2% or 2000 ppm of its uh, enrichment rather i can say 10 times of enrichment and 10 times of enrichment has to be based on many minerals and those minerals which are helpful for leaching point of view or workability point of view are the bastanesite those countries for example china is enriched in the bastanesite that is a fluorocarbonate occurs in carbonate rocks that's why they are leading in the re industry or re exploration program or re exploitation now genotype monazite they are also heavy high temperature mineral they are refractory basically taking out re is difficult from them and that's why we are enriched in monazite and genotype but the economics is much more harder here that's why the resources are not so good if we compare to china but we have resources good resources of monazite uh, in the ambadongar gujarat area where we have already proved some 7 lakh tons of uh, resources and likely to be exploited soon and zero time resources we have in india in the riverine places in the chatisgarh area or uh, and in jharkhand area where uh, hre related mineralize hre related resources are available so i can say that enough material is available for us whatever our demand is there for supplying to this uh, requirement next one seeing this uh, map this is a india map where where uh, we we have uh, uh, plotted the we where we have plotted the deposits and one can see all along this coast beach sand and indian placer deposits placer when we say placer are the sands where heavies are accumulated those who have visited the coastal areas might have seen the layer dark color layer light color layer so those light color like dark color layers are nothing but monazite enriched material or hematite enriched material or ilmenite rich enriched material and in that monazite is there and that monazite contains 40 to 65% of the re oxide and similarly in the genotime also we get in the river pressure as i said and in addition to that carbonatite is a rock which is of uh, say 65 mega annum old and it has been intruded in the dakkan basalt in the ambagad area gujarat chota uh, udaipur district gujarat area where the magma has injected at that time and this has brought the re in the uh, surface so they become the prime target they become the resources of the re and uh, from amd we are exploring all those things in addition to that we have sung valley in meghalaya we have mikir hills in assam we have sevatpur in tamil nadu we have sarni dandalai in rajasthan these are the places where uh, re's are known and in the rajasthan we have a shivana area shivana is a district where a volcanic caldera is uh, known which has existed some uh, some 200 mega annum earlier and that has got resources of hre and now we are going to prove we we have proved but we are going to prove a sizable deposit of hre related from the shivana rajasthan area so lre related are available in gujarat hre related is are available in rajasthan and these are the vision of fmd where we are going to prove sizable deposit for exploitation point of view and that is ultimately is going to make us atmanirbhar in re resources next one here i just uh, what i was telling that how the beach sand uh, uh, heavy mineral looks like one can see and then you can see the red color sand this is in the north of visakhapatnam red color sand which is a deep red color it has also got a, a, a monazite concentration and then in inline placers in the riverine placer even the, in the along the river you get heavy heavy uh, concentration that is the hre and all along this indian coast we have the deposits so that is the disposition of the deposits next one now if we have to uh, talk about uh, resources uh, what is the resources ultimately the quantity the quantity in coastal pressure we have 6.85 million ton of re content and in riverine pressure we have 24 
terms of uh, content. So these are the sources where we have already proved it and they are under consideration of IRL DA, uh, which, is, uh, which is ultimately going to exploit all those things. So the planning stage is continuing and probably in near future, we may be having our own RE related mines or RE related resources, uh, good for the country and which is, which is a, a new vision for AMD as well as for IRL. Next one. This is a Ambadungar related, Ambadungar and Sivana where we have. And uh, coming to instrumentation background, all these things require a lot of support from, we, we have uh, explained that, okay, we are uh, doing the drilling, we are uh, recovering the core and all those cores has to be analyzed. Then only one can get the grade. If you remember the second slide, when I was talking the quantity, when I was talking the quality, and we, I was talking the grade. So ultimately, grade has to be established. What is the quality of that particular mineral? So for that purpose, we have established number of laboratories in AMD Hyderabad, as well as in the all seven uh, regional centers. All these laboratories are in the form of petrographical studies, where we do petrographical studies, where we do mineral characterization by XRD, where we study the geochronology, uh, the data of the rocks, all those TIMS and IRMS are available. Then we do WDXRF, EDXRF, all those data is generated. And then we have a very good uh, established uh, chemistry laboratory, which helps us by utilizing ICPMS, I, ICP OES, flame AS, ICTOC, fluorimeter, etc. And then we have a well dedicated physics group because physics group is the group who supports us in the field. They, they go to field and then they log the borehole and they give the in-situ measurement of uh, equivalent U3 weight. Now we are planning to develop an instrument through PFN logging that the in-situ uranium can be established by that methodology. PRC is helping in this and various methodology we are utilizing as on date, gamma ray spectrometry and gamma ray alpha spectrometry, neutron activation analysis, gamma ray logging boreholes, all those instruments we do and all those things required very heavy support from the instrumentation group. We have electronics engineers with us. We have physicists, those who are posted in that group and they design, develop as per our requirement. Our requirement is very, very peculiar and very specific. One can see the number of instruments produced by the AMD itself and we use our own made instruments. So this is the group which is in the background, which ultimately gives us the grade of the particular material or mineral that this is to be <coughs> Uh, seen with reference to economics or not to be seen with economics. Next one. Then this is the vision of uh, AMD. Uh, in uh, nutshell, if I have to say, then exploration inputs to be ident intensified in the first order target for resource augmentation, then developing identified green field areas for further exploration. This is basically our vision and through this vision, we are uh, proceeding further for future point of view. Then what is uh, we are thinking right now? What right now we are doing 2 million line kilometer of Helivon geophysical survey we are planning and then 5 million meters exploratory drilling we are planning. And this ultimately should give us equal amount of resources what we have proved as on date. That is 3 lakh 50, 50 uh, ton uranium oxide within a period of 10 to 15 years. And this vision of 15 years is there. And this vision is the driving force for our whole work. We are dedicated to this vision. We have committed and we are likely to get this resource for the country. So this is the broad vision under which all activities are continuing. And this requires strengthening in house exploration and our redeeming of the directorate by acquiring a state of the art instrument, train manpower and infrastructure. Uh, this is our the high, uh, this is our high, this is on, uh, this, these are the things which are high on agenda for achieving the feat. And for this, we are getting the support from all DA units, especially BRC, especially RRCAT, IGCAR, all are supporting us in various uh, parameters, various projects to achieve these things. AMD, Though, as I said, it is a, it requires the uh, support from various fields, various experts. Many times we need computer experts for modeling point of view, and that we are getting from BRC. Many times we, many times we need uh, analysis of helium that we are getting from BRC as well as from high water board. Many times we need 
boron isotopes in LC that we are getting from heavy water board. Many times we are finding good minerals, new mineral, but the characterization, high order characterization that is done in cyclotron from RR cat. I, IGCAR is helping in many ways. So all the efforts from all the units of DAE has made us to visualize our dream for 3,50,000 tons of uranium oxide in a period of 10 to 15 years, that is 2020 and 2035. I'll again say that this is a gamble. We should have our vision. We should have vision with based on our scientific input. We are sure that we are going to touch, but gamble is a gamble. Nobody can predict that you are going to get 3,50,000 by doing all those things. You may get 7,10,000 as well. That is also there. Gambling is also process where one can expect more than two times, three times. It depend, again depends upon your luck also. So gambling and this exploration business is again a lucky business where one can use the scientific wisdom, but the luck is luck when one has to depend upon. Next one. Then coming to last slide, the concluding remarks, I'll sum up in this way. The diverse geological setup of India encompasses rocks of Archean to recent and provide scopes for varied metallogeny. When I say varied metallogeny, I am talking to all metals, whatever metals a, a civilization is using. Let it be gold or copper or bronze or lead zinc or alumina, anything. So all these things are available in India. And in India, we have all types of all sorts of rock. The oldest rock of the of the earth is also located in India, 4.2 giga enum rock is there in the Singhum zone and in near Sukinda that has been dated by uh, recently. And then developing technological, instrumental and conceptual advancement adopted by AMD facilitated augmentation of 3,50,000 tons of uranium oxide and discovery of many new uranium occurrence deposits in India. We have, we have uh, discovered many new occurrences which are ultimately giving you new conceptual model. Now finding new conceptual model, proving them, experimenting them and making them in a form of hypothesis that is now going on. And we are putting all the R&D efforts, uh, getting help from all the DA units, which is making us to understand the processes. Ultimately, understanding of genetic processes of any deposit is a very, very important phenomena. If we can understand, certainly we are going to get the deposit many folds, not one uh, time, many times. So coming to next one, India has an ambitious and innovative three-stage nuclear power program, which aims at utilizing its huge thorium resources, along with uranium for nuclear power generation in near future. And uh, we are happy that, yes, we have a very good uh, uh, resource of thorium all along the, all along the coast and that may sustain whatever is needed in the future. Next one. Again, based on all those things, we have intensified our exploration for RE resources and we have found <clears throat> good results also. Within two years, we have proved some seven lakh tons in Ambadogar and Ambadogar is going to be a mine site in a future, say in a two or three years, where we can get our own RE resources in a form of, uh, in a form of good uh, development. So that will be a part of Make in India program. The Ambadongar Carbonite Complex, which I said, Gujarat is extensive monazite bearing. Uh, and and um, uh, in addition to that, monazite bearing beach sand deposits are going to be source for LRE supply. So we are comfortable position for as, as far as LRE demand is there and supply position is there. Then HRE related uh, rocks are available in the volcano plutonic complex of Sivana, Rajasthan where we are going to get a good deposit of genotime or HRE. So HRE is available in Rajasthan, LRE is available in uh, Gujarat, uh, uh, and uh, as well as in the along the coast. All this makes us happy that, okay, in case if some emergency is there, some requirement comes, certainly we can develop our resources, we can exploit our resources, we can use our resources without the dependency of any country. Next one. So with this, I... Thank you all for patient hearing. And I hope that I have uh, shared my thoughts based on various concepts, various inputs in AMD. And this was, this is the milestones. This, this is the milestone and vision of the AMD. Thank you very much. Over to Mumbai. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.
that was i think too exhaustive to absorb in one uh, one sitting like this uh, uh, i i am sure members will have many questions i will request uh, shri dharne ji to take up uh, some questions thank you dr sinha that was a very enlightening lecture you started right from the basics of the front end uh, system for our three stage power program started with defining what are the atomic minerals how they are explored what are the insights of the exploration the details of that not even only that but you also made us familiarize with the history of the earth and how during those so many uh, million years or billion years the the things drifted and got deposited that was a very uh, new concept to many of us you also talked about along with uranium you also talked about the rare material metals and the rare earths it was quite uh, enlightening and it was i mean ending on a very happy note that in uh, these requirements where india will be self reliant and our three step program will be working very fine with atmanirbharta and make in india it was great to listen to you i mean many new things we got through your lecture and i again thank you so much for a very nice lecture now it is the time for questions i had seen one question from mr sanat kumar and partly i think it was answered during the course of the slides that how it has got deposited in certain places and how it is not uniformly distributed all over earth do you want to uh, ask something more uh, mr sanat kumar okay can you hear me can you hear me Yeah, 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 yeah. Please go ahead. Sure, please go ahead. Okay, I think uh, I asked the question <laughs> before you <laughs> went through the thing. I had I had formed my question even before the lecture. Yes. <laughs> I asked that question, but nevertheless, I will end it with a different question. Okay. You are saying in Tumalapalli, large deposits are available. Fine, but their concentration, that is, the amount of uranium that you can get out of it, percentage is very, very low. compared to what is there in canada or what is there in australia this is my problem why is it that similar why is it we are struggling with alkali leaching and various other things and we are having a very small percentage in our mineral thank you sir uh, i'll reply in this way that india is fortunate to have tumla palli type of environment no other country in world has that type of deposit or that type of geological environment see the positive point not the negative point okay, okay. you have the largest deposit of the world of 250000 tons no body has got this type of environment and this type of deposit is spread over a large area so again as i said everything is depend upon the situation we have this situation we should be happy with this situation we should not compare with the neighbor who has got a million of rupees but whatever we have that is there of course it is a low grade but large tonnes we have our developed our own technology to exploit it yes we are going ahead coming back to your high grade mineralization yes high grade mineralization has to be there environment similar to high grade mineralization which you were pointing to are available in india for example in gogi we have for example in telangana we have we have 0.1% and above but at the same time those deposits are logged in because of various societal issue if those issues are sorted out we will also be having similar grade type of deposits of course they are smaller but even then they we have that type of things so saying that why we not have right now we have a few and in future we are likely to get many more i am optimistic thank you sir <laughs> yes. the, 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 the problem is you have to dig up much more quantity of uh, mud before you can get some uh, uranium that is my issue that is the yes, problem sir very correct you 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 should concentrate to some other areas for example leave in case you are not interested to dig up more you have the gogi but you are not able to take out you have the meghalaya not able to take out you have the telangana not able to take out but it cannot continue like this one day the political will will come 
which will say that you take out your deposit with less digging with less amount of material you take out we are waiting for that time thank you thank you very much thank you yeah. sir and we can take the next question please there is a large audience so i hope that there will be many more questions in the minds of the people because there was a lot of new introduction done so next question please i think chat box is all is all answered yeah looks like every everybody's question is answered the yeah. talk was so clear and so descriptive that People almost all questions happy. are true yes all all the things are clarified already very informative congratulations and yes. activities are umd very nicely mr dharne i am dr ak suri yes sir yeah sir yeah um it was an excellent uh, lecture by dr dk sena yeah and i congratulate him for all the efforts which they have made in improving the total space but i see only a linear scale up operation from 2010 onwards which is due to the mostly addition of uranium to the drilling of tumlapalli so when are we likely to see another bump with another source being added which will add a bump on our uranium uh, uh, resource position because tumlapalli is known to give as long as you keep on drilling you will get add the deposits but there is the additional new area which is likely to generate additional deposits in future hmm? yes sir uh, first uh, thank you sir you are our inspiration and i am happy that you have asked this question i would like to answer this question and will be very happy to get another bump right sir uh, coming yeah. back to tumla palli sir uh, i'll share some new thoughts which are emerging uh, they yes. are they are very good things uh, we never had this type of information that tumla palli will have 0.1% of uranium mineralization oh i oh. see okay you are also surprised now i am yes, giving 0.1 is a very high yeah so you surprise that's why i say <laughs> dr sena i was saying that if there is 03 there has to be something richer somewhere but we have to locate where it is as right. i was always asking you this question in the council right sir so now i am saying locating point 1 that means we are going towards the source right sir very correct very correct and this is the discovery of two years we are getting point 1 values in tumlapalli fantastic okay. of course if you get 3, 3 meter 3 meter zone in that it is hardly 20 cm 30 cm 40 cm 50 cm but when 50 cm can come it can come in a form of 1 meter or more and yes. that is our vision now we are busy with that finding what is the chemical processes which has given you 0.1% in tumlapalli three times more yes. and if we can solve that that mystery of chemical precipitation then we are going to get in tumlapalli itself higher deposit and bigger richer pockets no, no, no. i am asking you this question basically is it upstream or downstream sir sir it is uh, downward downward so that means there is a source somewhere else which is getting concentrated in the uh, lower side so you richer on the downstream basin hmm. inside the basin sir of yeah. course r and d is continuing will hope mm. so that is one so probably tumla palli itself will give another bump if we are able to locate point one rich uh, great type of thing so that yes. is one area sir another area which is emerging un in understanding of uh, uh, singhum shear zone we know that singhum a similar type of deposits are there whether it is jadugada whether it is bhatin narwa pahad all those things are similar the flow sheets are similar type of thing now recently we have located a kudada type of deposit which is in peridotite sir that is a metabasic rock where 24% mgo is there in the host rock and uranite is there and you get chromite chromite up to 2000 ppm so mm -hmm. this is a new environment which has been discovered recently 
and it is going to play an important role in singhum metallurgy first time we are reporting rather i can share this information that world over nobody has reported this type of occurrence we are going to write a good paper on that of course two papers we have published but this is if this is true then a large scope is available probably if we can locate similar type of many bodies in singhum shear zone then that can give you another bump and that yes. bump is likely to be a great bump because that environment is there and in singhum area whatever we are going to prove that is going to be economical because the people are friendly there they are well versed with our activity and they are happily accepting us so that yes. way we are uh, thinking sir no no you have your establishment so there is nothing that you have to go fresh and right right sir <laughs> right activity there right. they, it will be very easy to upgrade your uh, uh, activities right right sir right sir mm. so these are the few things no, these are good these are good uh, things which of course by by asking question you have uh, revealed but otherwise the audience would not know <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so we need suri sir every time <laughs> maybe it was classified information which is not a revealed no no it is uh, not classified it is still uh, in an exploratory stage so he perhaps he didn't want whatever is there in the public domain has been published that is what he has given so <laughs> they was to find out whether which direction they are proceeding so that they can add further uh, uh, otherwise the target which they are now putting is to 75000 tons uh, per year which is relatively low uh, target for uh, amd at this stage and my belief it should be more than 1 lakh ton addition per year hmm. <laughs> yes i think it will happen with the constant yeah, efforts no, no, of that's AMD. true that's true but means my uh, objective is to give a challenging task to the uh, <laughs> director not <laughs> not the lower task which he is comfortable with sir i'll share with the audience that your challenge has made us to steep rise that graph is because of you people sir <laughs> your group has given us that impetus when you were in the council you were in the all committees so aerial survey so now you will be happy to know that aerial survey is giving us very good target and we are getting finding the positive results the committee which you headed that time we were explaining you now the results are pouring in of course that is why i was saying that see the uh, exploration which you are doing with helibond will give you a new work front 10 years later right sir and i left around 2013 right sir <laughs> now about 10 years that new fronts have to be added so that right. is why i asked you the questions <laughs> right sir thank you sir thank you very much sir thank you sir um, next question is from mr abhijit tillu regarding with respect to ocean mining mr tillu would you like to go ahead with your question ha uh, sir sir good evening uh, good. my question was do we also have a mandate for ocean mining i am new to this field i am more of a novice listener to the great speakers around here so i had read about the rare earth mate rare earth elements being found near andaman and nicobar so do we also have any mandate for deep ocean mining and whether it is of any uh, economically viable and of any utility to us oh, okay uh i'll answer with your background probable background which i am understanding see along the coast we have offshore and onshore so we are exploring but within the sea is a different matter that is controlled by coastal authorities and that is cg c jed that is a different rule which is available and we are not allowed to take up the mining inside the sea coastal regulatory authority controls all those things right now interpreting similar type of things which are available on shore in the offshore is likelihood whatever uh, placers we are we have we are having along the coast are probably available in the continental shelf area not in the slope area so say you can say up to 1 km yes the placers would be available in a placers when i talk that mean placer is a rare mineral a rare earth minerals that is mostly uh, monazite and when they come back to they are recycled basically so so recycling is giving you in uh, in uh, uh, onshore areas 
now your question is in andamar or deeper sea areas deeper sea deeper deeper sea areas may have rare earth in some other form not in the form of placer because the depth of water is more and when depth of water goes more the processes are different say up to 1 km or 3 km or 5 km such type of processes are operative where the reducing environment is there and we get manganese nodule type of things and manganese nodules are nothing but a, a material which is occurring in a form of nodular shape having manganese as well as other valuable metals including vanadium nickel manganese all those things are associated with that but rare earth are not known in that in that environment and probably it will not be there so hoping that rare earth is available in the deep sea environment is very difficult deep sea environment may not be have any uh, rare earth material regarding andaman the question what you have andaman coast is also very sharp coast those who have visited andaman they are they are not sandy beaches sandy beaches are not there and the hinterland hinterland when i say that means the rock inside is a basalt very young basalt even the volcanism is going on in that area so the basalt will not give you the placers to be accumulated along the coast so in andaman i don't think any deposit will be there but along the coast of india yes they are there because inside we have the rich rock provenance which is providing the sand and monazite so this is my answer sir i think it is well answered thank you sir any other question mr rajendra do you want to ask a question because your mic is not mute and there is some things would you like to ask a question parth sarathi wants to ask yeah please go ahead mr parth sarathi you are muted parth sir hello yeah what <laughs> uh, thank you dr sinha for a very exhaustive and informative lecture i am very happy to to listen to the entire story i as you have answered earlier your uh, bsoa talks about uh, beach sands and offshore exploration investigations offshore party have answered similarly our asrs stands for aerial surveys and remote sensing i would like amd to take in a big way the uh, exploration uh, uses of uh, remote sensing technology for the exploration activity thank you uh, yes sir we are we are having a dedicated group of uh, remote sensing uh, personnel and now we are using all the data which are available uh, through isro and now now we are planning to use drone survey drone is now new concept which has emerged and the government of india has allowed the drone related operations so uh, some uh, group of uh, scientists are working on that if uh, heavy load drones are available with us that can help us for further uh, survey as well as for uh, mapping the terrain which will ultimately help us for locating the deposit and evaluating the things thank you thank you thank you sir abhijit any other question if uh, there are no more questions i think i would hand over to mr malotra for the vote of thanks thank you very much yes thank you mr darne and yes i had a small question but then i patiently waited that anyway i am going to get the chance <laughs> so before vote of thanks a very small question you know it occurs when i Uh, uh, work on the you know historical aspects of department of atomic energy uh, i have gone through some documents that the first ingot of uranium which was produced in barc it came from rajasthan i mean the, the mineral from rajasthan yes sir so why why did we stop with that first or maybe few uh, ingots i mean if you go by that history the first mine of uranium should have been in rajasthan but now i understand that last i think uh, two decades we have done lot of work at seeker 
So what is the uh, position there? I had even heard to the extent that uh, the place may be handed over to UCIL to uh, exploit the deposits. So what is the situation at Seeker? Yes, sir. Uh, some small, small, two, three questions are there one by one I'll answer. First, uh, INGOT. INGOT was from Bhunas Mines of Rajasthan yeah. in Pal district. And that was a pegmatite. And in pegmatite, you get lump of uraninite. And that was the requirement that time. And that was a very minor requirement. And that requirement could be met with that, exp uh, with that expression. Uh, that was not at all mine, in fact. That was a location. From there, we separated uranite and we sent and the, uh, the requirement was over. But we never started any mine on that particular place. Even we closed that operation exploration because in pegmatite, you don't get deposit. Hardly you can get one ton or something like that. That is okay. So, so that is one point. Second point, the question, we had the earliest uh, mine even uh, if you remember my some of the slide where I was referring Umar, Umra in Rajasthan. So Umra near Udaipur was the place where the mine was operative, exploratory mining. And we have, ex when we do the exploratory mining, we take out the material. And that material itself is a good material for a small requirement. Whatever requirement was there, so that was met. But that is not so economical that you still can go and take up that mine and uh, run for 30 or for 50 years. So that's why whatever exploratory business was there, that was done. We took out the material and we closed the mine. Mine is still there, sir. And one can go and visit. We are still continuing further exploration. If we can find the extension area. And Umra is also having very good uh, inform very good. Uh, uh, background that a largest grade of deposit. This uh, this was the question which was asked by Suri Saab in E2F interview committee. <laughs> and I'm giving again same answer. <laughs> what is the grade of highest grade you found in uh, in India? I said up 26 percent in Umrah mine. He was very happy and he gave me the promotion also. <laughs> so lighter side. On. <laughs> so so. So Umrah was having that type of uh, nuggets where one can get a, a good pockets, but that was not continuing to get a huge deposit. So Umrah was certainly closed that time and now we are trying to revive it, but uh, it is very difficult to get a level of mining development. Now coming to third question, you are right, sir. We, we were working for uranium in Rajasthan in Sika district starting from 1955 and from lately, 1998, we started taking up the Rohil project. And Rohil project, after 20 years, we have proved some 8,000 tons. And from last year, the mining has also started. We have reached to certain status. We have reached to the hard rock uh, level of uh, mining uh, uh, business. And UCL has already taken up the proper exploratory mining status is to be given to them. First, we have to do the exploratory mining, then the commercial mining comes into picture. So now AMD is doing that exploratory mining. Maybe after three to five years, that will be converted into commercial mining. Then the production may start. So the work uh, related to mining beyond Singh Bhumsir zone has started in Rajasthan. Probably this is going to be another mine where the commercial mining will be started. So that is the status of uh, from Seeker district. So this is the update, sir. Thank you very much. So first, let me thank you as an audience to answer my question beautifully, Dr. Senha. And now I do the larger task of thanking you as a speaker overall on behalf of, behalf of uh, INS. So one of the, I think, uh, a, a fantastic lectures where complete information, the past, present, and future uh, the milestones, the planning, and the future vision. Everything you covered in a very short time. And uh, yes, uh, uh, the operations of AMD, they are such that a person delivering a lecture on those operations is capable of making the uh, narration boring, or he can make it extraordinarily interesting. And you have done the letter. So please accept my compliments. A wonderful, very interesting uh, lecture. 
uh, on the operations of uh, uh, AMD. Now, I think two, three times uh, you mentioned that it is a gambling. Yes, I do agree that your activity is like a gambling. You, you put large number of uh, uh, manpower, resources, everything. and uh, But I think uh, thousands of years back, Lord Krishna told that not only for AMD, I think it applies to everyone. So, so keep doing the hard work. Uh, leave the results to the higher, like, you know, gods or the higher people. So I wish uh, AMD and uh, Dr. Sinha all the best. And may Dr. Suri's wishes come true. May, may you start uh, adding more than lakh ton per year resources to the Indian kitty. So once again, thank you very much, Dr. Sinha. And I, while thanking you, I remember the days when when I had been given the responsibility of annual report of BAE somewhere in 2000, 2008, and I think uh, you were in that planning, uh, right, sir. Uh, this thing. So I think I used to interact a lot with you. Right, sir. <laughs> because uh, uh, naturally for, for annual report, uh, all the things will come only at 11th hour. In the first <laughs> hour, you can't give the material. So it has to come in 11th hour. Right, and I, I have my own tensions because a sword is hanging on my neck that by 7th March it has to be placed in the uh, parliament. So I think we used to have a lot of interaction those days, if you can recollect. Right, so sir. Thank you. Right. Thank you for those days also. <laughs> thank you, sir. And uh, next, uh, I would like to thank our uh, uh, Honorable President, uh, Shri S.K. Mehta, for guiding uh, the entire team of INS. And because of which uh, today we have completed 17 uh, webinars. And uh, then, of course, a special mention to a web subcommittee, Dr. Rama Rao, Dr. Ramana Murthy, and Dr. Uh, Mr. Dharne. All deserve uh, my compliments, my appreciation, and my uh, gratitude. Uh, next, of course, every time I do that, I thank our own colleague, Shri G.D. Mittal and Dr. Shimjit Rajgopal from BRC for, uh, you know, uh, making it known to large number of people that the webinar is there. So the propagating the information about the webinar, I thank them from the bottom of my heart. And of course, last but not the least, I am very thankful to uh, the audience. Today also the audience has hit century and uh, I'm very happy. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, I request them that uh, let them make it a habit to uh, hit century, double century, triple century in every of our webinar. And uh, with that, I come to the end of the uh, duty which was given to me, the vote of thanks. And as every time I do, I have an announcement for the next webinar. So our next webinar will be two weeks from now. That is on 19th March, this month only on the 19th, we will have the next webinar, the 18th webinar, which will be delivered by Professor Amit Garg from Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad. And uh, the topic will be, though, though it is uh, from the Management Institute, but the topic is our own. Uh, the topic of the webinar is going to be role of nuclear uh, energy in meeting India's net zero targets by 2070. So I think it will be a good thing to hear about our activities uh, from an outside third party uh, perspective and that too from an expert in management. So. Let us meet again on uh, 19th March. Till then, bye-bye. Thank you very much once again. Happy weekend to all of you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Balot Thank you, thank you Sinaji. Thank you all for joining virtually and uh, meet you on 19th. Thank you.